Hi guys, I'm Dr. Hans and this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel here on YouTube about beer and home brewing. If you are new to this channel, you haven't heard me bitching on for a full year about my long ongoing experiment. I do a lot of stupid like experiment videos, but this has been a long one. And of course it's about, as you saw in the thumbnail, not cleaning your fermenter for a year. It's also about reducing yeast because I have been reusing yeast over and over and over and over for a full year and uh, I wanted to like see it through so uh, yeah it has been a long one guys and yeah it's about using your conical fermenter as a yeast washer so we're gonna discuss all of that today and we're gonna sample the beers when this experiment started to go south. So if you are new to this channel, please consider becoming a subscriber. I do these stupid things so you don't have to, so sub up and uh, hit that notification bell so you will get notified when I post a video like this one. And of course, give this video a thumbs up. So, are you ready for today's theme? The fermenter in here, you wanna see how it looks? after a full year. Let's check it out. Okay, let's open the fridge. So it's dirty one. It's had me sitting in here for cold crashing. Uh, it's a really dirty fermenter. And as I said, I haven't cleaned this one in a year. I have been using it a lot. So we're gonna talk about that today. But yeah, the experiment is finally over. So this has been sitting here, cold crashing, actually for a month, because I wanted to see if I could lager it. But we're gonna come back to that. We're gonna pour the beer. I have two more beers gonna try today. But there you have the, yeah, it's uh, very dirty looking. Hi guys, if you stick to the end, you will see me dump the Fermentosaurus. Maybe not the whole Fermentosaurus, but the beer. So back to the doctor in the brew shed and uh, yeah, stick to the end and we will dump it. And uh, it's cold in here, so I have some other ones. I hope to get to try this as well today. I managed to do a second video after this one. Yeah, this is how it looks, guys. And uh, under here is just a temperature probe, which goes to the STC 1000. So we're controlling it. So we have been cold crashing this for a month in uh, 0.5 Celsius. That's just above freezing for your Fahrenheit, guys. Okay. So when I first saw the uh, fermenter source, conical fermenter. Of course, I was intrigued about the pressurized fermentation. I'm still am. It's an awesome thing. I have a playlist about uh, yeah, me using the fermenter source and uh, I'm gonna come back to that now when I'm gonna free this one up from this experiment. You see, it's a collection ball here, which is meant to uh, do like yeast troop dumps and so on. But when you have this pressurized, you have the ability to draw beer from the top. And that's why I bought it, because I don't want to empty out the beer the other way. We have a line here with yeast and the ball is full. Every batch of beer I have brewed, the ball fills up with yeast and then we have some yeast on top here. What I thought with the fermenter source was, what if I would just dump the ball and continue using the more fresher yeast on top. This is the yeast that has been settled down under cold crushing. In that way, I could remove the true and the most of the older, older yeast and still use the more fresh yeast here. So I tried that method out and it worked great. 
and I tried it over, over and over and over and over again for a full year. That meant that I didn't have to clean the fermenter. It looks really nasty, but this is just yeast. So I have this habitat in here where the yeast thrives. So I have just been like feeding it. So on brew day, I take the beer and pulled off the collection bottle, emptied it out and filled it up with cold wort again. Uh, and I have been just using this yeast here. I think you get it. So every time we remove some, and the next time we get more tube and more yeast and then we remove some. So it's a cycle. So I cake it on brew day every time and fill it up. And this turns around beer very, very fast. The yeast I have been using was the Saflager 3470. I hope I got that figures right this time. And the Bohemian Lager. What started this? with the yeast was really that I wanted to use the Keller beer yeast, which I harvested from a commercial bottle. I have a video on that, I'm gonna put a card up where the card goes and the link down below as well. And on brew day, I tasted it. Like it's a called a mantra, can you say that? I have always taste starter because this starter had gone bad. I actually saved it here. Um, so it's called sour calabir now. It tasted really good, good sour, but it wasn't any good as a calabir yeast, of course. So I poured two bags of uh, Saflager and two bags of the Bohemian yeast. So four packs in the fermenter and that's a lot of money in four packs of yeast uh, for one small 23 liter batch. So I wanted to reuse it and uh, I have been thinking about this idea since I got the fermenter source. So I thought let's try it out and uh, of course I want to try it and then I decided let's try it out till it goes bad. And I have brewed 21 beers with the same yeast in the fermenter source without washing it. And they have come out great, clean, but yeah, it went south. And so we're gonna start tasting the beers where it actually went south. I think the, uh, the last beer I brewed in this was the Boulder Single Malt Single Hop Boulder Smash. Bold malt and um, sass hops. I'm gonna put a card up to that video. But I have brewed stouts, all my coffee beers on here, uh, Schwarz beer, all different lagers. And uh, the three day lager, the five day lager, a lot of beers. 21 beers at least. I try to sum everything up before this uh, video, so I could have missed something, but at least 21 beers. So, when did things start to go bad? It was my Christmas beer for this year, and uh, I haven't put up a video for that one as well, because I wanted to lager it to see what helps, because this is a spiced beer. Uh, the recipe for this beer is up on my Patreon page, linked to Patreon. Where is the Christmas beer? I think it's here. Um, I want to mark everything. I haven't done that yet. Yes, it is the Christmas beer. I actually uh, have another beer in here, which has gone through the uh, same yeast and the same fermenter is the bock right next to the Christmas beer here. Okay, so this is a little bit overcarbed, but we will be fine. Okay, here's the the Christmas beer, and 
this is my like gingerbread man or ginger bells maybe it's a evolution so and this beer is not as good as last year i've been tweaking the recipe so i have to look back on that for next year but it, it is a good beer but it had a very like special side note till it and this is christmas spices in this beer i haven't made a uh, grain to glass video on this yet uh, i still might do it maybe i will release it uh, at uh, when christmas is starting yeah maybe i should wait <sighs> so you do get uh, the gingerbread spices but it had a like a an off note to it which wasn't nice and when you are using uh, spices your beer can be like unbalanced pointy and needs some time to settle down so it gets more mellow so i didn't really know what was wrong i thought this beer just needed some time so but we're gonna taste it And yeah, time really helped this beer because now it's a light, refreshing, clean, but Christmassy gingerbread spice beer. And that nasty side note ain't longer there. So lagering really worked. This has been lagering for quite a while and it really worked. It's a, I did some really stupid like experiments when I brewed this one. So yeah, I have to get the green to glass video out so you can see it. Cause I do this like stupid experiments so you don't have to. So please don't forget to subscribe and yeah, like the video. Of course, you don't like my fermenter looking like that, but that's just yeast, guys. So, so this beer came out really, really well. And uh, as I said, the recipe for this one is up on uh, Patreon in the uh, Dr. Hans recipe book, the Christmas section. Uh, I think the name is like Christmas Beer or Gingerbread Man 2018, something like that. Yeah, okay. So after that beer, I wanted to brew something else on it. And I got this stupid idea. I have this brewing with coffee series. I'm gonna put a card up to that series as well. And I wanted to do like a crazy beer and I wrote on it here on YouTube the orange coffee beer Asked why people were thinking of brewing one. So I brewed it And it also had that Side note which I didn't care for like the the Christmas beer so we're gonna crack open that one as well. I have it in the... There it is. Orange coffee. I bottle it, cause I ditched the keg actually, cause I didn't like this beer either. So I had to bottle some. I'm gonna get this into glass. And this has been sitting for quite a while also now. So let's give it a pour. This is the orange coffee beer. This is bottled from the from the keg. No, from the tap of my uh, yeah, from the tap of my kegerator. I have videos on uh, how I bottle both from the uh, picnic tap and directly from the tap. I'll try to put some card ups and links down below as well to them. So this is the orange coffee beer. Uh, yeah, I like the color of it. Didn't get 
so much color from the coffee. Uh, I think I added, no, I added 200 grams of cold brewed coffee. Okay, can't really say. And of course, there was uh, orange zest in this as well. Ain't really orangey. Don't know if I can pick up the coffee. What if this is good now? I haven't tried this in a very long time since I ditched the keg because I didn't care for the beer. Let's try it. Cheers. Much better, actually, that... Uh, Side note, it's, it's gone, uh, it's biscuity, bready, um, do I get the coffee? Well, I know there's coffee in it. I do get something and maybe there's still a hint of that side note but it's so vague now so yeah lagering really helped for those beers and this video didn't turn out as I planned it we're gonna taste beer number three also I was thinking this beer is gonna be awful But it's quite nice. It doesn't taste like coffee. It doesn't taste like orange. So if you're cold brewing, you could add even more. But there is something there, and I think that's the coffee. Because it's something extra, not bad. But that side note, it's gone. Ugly, spicy side note. Log it out in both of these ones. Much better. but. Yeah, there's actually nothing wrong with this. So I could have just kept the keg. If I had bought this, I would have, uh, yeah, appreciated it. So, but I'm a little harder with my own beers. But yeah, yeah, I'm surprised guys. Okay, so the third one. And uh, yeah, this was just gonna be a, uh, like a Christmas lager, I wanted to use Safid hops. I had had a lot of it. Hope I have some left. So I I don't know if these two recipes are up on my Patreon in the Dr. Hans recipe book. So I'm gonna add them also up there. Um, but yeah, I will write in the, the notes that even though I'm gonna call it the orange coffee beer, it ain't that much like coffee and orange taste to it. So I'm gonna write in the notes for this recipe to add more. Okay, this beer, and this is such a cool feature with the fermenter source that we can pour directly out of the fermenter and you ferment fast as you ferment under pressure like this with log yeast in under pressure and going much higher in temperature it's uh, like the yeast are on steroids and yeah if you haven't watched my three day and five day log videos I will put links down below to them. Maybe cards, maybe cards all over the plate. But yeah, links down below. So it's uh, it's not as dark as you see it. It's more of a darker orange. So I really like the color. I have a nice head on it as well. It's not crystal clear yet. Should have cleared up by this time, I think. The setting for over a month. 
at in the fermenter and people have been asking me how long can a beer sit on yeast cake and yes can sit for a long time on the yeast cake and uh, leaving it cold cold crashing on the yeast cake it's it's not an issue i think i saw something there but mm, yeah yes just me okay so this beer uh, winter lager is called it so I'm gonna put it up there as a winter lager don't know actually what that means I brewed it for the winter and what if guys what if this is a nice one now and this video goes to south as my experiment no my experiment didn't go to south it went well I did managed to ride it out until the beer started to get bad but you have to understand that this was a spiced beer with a lot of spice in it so i had to know if the problem would continue and then i thought with this one maybe if the spices from this beer were still in this one but i thought i have to brew one last beer to see if it's a problem with the yeast and it was it was now i know but i have been brewing like like i said the uh, the real breakfast stout with you this coffee schwarz beer the chocolate coffee stout which i just put out a video from and we have been brewing like light lagers and yeah all types of beer not all types of beer of course but yeah different beers on this i brewed a book which is in there and yeah the oktoberfest a lot of videos like all lager videos this year has been this experiment so this beer the winter lager is it nasty i do get some caramel notes to it no nasty no nastiness on the nose okay let's dive in cheers guys and uh, yeah thanks for watching and thanks for sticking by this is gonna be a long one i'm so sorry i will try to edit it down but i spent a year on this experiment so hang in there cheers Yeah, okay, uh, I think the recipe's sound is a nice beer with a nasty side note. So it's, it's still there, but it has mellowed down. It has a, like a <coughs> call to spiciness, uh, which I don't like. Uh, don't know really how to put it but it's in there but maybe if I would have left this for like two months something like that another month it would have been a nice beer but yeah I'm moving on so this video ain't really about how many times you can reuse yeast it ain't a perfect number you can reuse yeast how many times as you want but just keep on tasting it if this wouldn't have been a spiced beer it would have ended with this recipe that's the gingerbread the christmas the christmas beer of course you should always like clean and sanitize your fermenter but just cause it looks nasty in there doesn't mean that it's dirty because it's yeast it's krausen there's nothing bad and uh, yeah it's a yeast culture in there which is really healthy so you could do this and uh, i have pitched using a fermented bucket i don't know if you can yeah pitch on the yeast cake and so on and, and that's totally fine to do at how many times 
until the yeast gets bad. So taste your beers. I brew more beers than I can drink, so I can do this stupid kind of experiment. If you're concerned about your every batch, you can always use new yeast every time. But if you are in this for the, the hobby, the brewing, the experiment, yeah, taste it, try it, try it writing out. How many times can you reuse yeast? And this time, 18 times at least, because I could have missed one or two beers, but at least 18 times they were really clean beers and the 19th times something went wrong maybe something went in there when i opened the open the top and filled the fermenter up i don't know but something happened but 18 times on on reusing the yeast like 17 times 20 uh, but with that said these two beers are fine now so we could be called even call that 20 times and if I had waited for maybe another month I could have said 21 the nasty side note in this one has really mellowed down I would say when it was young it wasn't drinkable now it's a drinkable refreshing beer but the nastiness in the the last one has really died down over time because i said it has been sitting for a month there cold crashing so now it's actually drinkable wasn't it's qu quite nice beer with a little side notes to it now which i don't care for i had much worse commercial beers than this one so guys i'm gonna clean my fermenter now so i can put some fresh wort in there and yeah i also have the my tilt in there which i haven't used for ages because the battery is dead so i want to replace the battery so i can use my tilts again and i want to put a fresh batch with whatever yeast I want to use because I have been forced to brew beers with this yeast and that's why I chose to do my stouts with the lagers it's it's you can brew stouts with lagers you're totally fine doing that some commercial ones use lager yeast for the stout so it ain't really a, an issue but that's why I did it so I have my hands tied because I had to feed my culture brewing beer. So I'm glad to say that this experiment is over. Okay, so this is pressurized. We'll remove that. And let's... Uh, I think it's closed. Closed now. Releasing the pressure. We could... Please be closed. <clears throat> it was closed. Okay. So, that's the ball. yeast that yeast served me well 18 or even 19 if we count the orange beer we got 20 batches okay so hope we can yes we're dumping i have a tilt in there so hopefully it won't get stuck and I have a cleaning system which I built for the fermented source. So 
don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell. And I'm dumping a lot of beer here for doing this experiment. So I think it's well worth a thumbs up. And uh, meanwhile, we're dumping that. I'm gonna show you how to clean this with my other DIY cleaning device. Build yourself one of this one. I'll put a cord up to that DIY video. So inexpensive. This is uh, Star Sand in the uh, in the pressure bottle. We have Sandy Clean. Okay, so now it's just yeast coming there. So we build up the pressure by pumping, hook it up and let sanitizer, SaniClean run through it. And we're actually good to go. But uh, yeah, this one needs a thorough cleaning. But uh, yeah, that will be for another video. Okay, and uh, if you want, you can add uh, a PVW solution in, in this as well, run through it. This time, I'm just gonna do it with some Sani Clean. So I'm straight on it. Okay, so guys, if you are new to this channel, please consider becoming a subscriber and do hit that little bell so you get notification when I put out a video like this one. And of course, give this video a thumbs up. <sighs> yeah. Remember, I do these stupid things so you don't have to, so don't forget it. Um, triple fisted here today. And if you guys are into more content, there's also my Patreon page to check out. The Dr. Hans recipe book. Well over 100 recipes now, mostly my own. And yeah, where much recipe this year from the uh, experiment this video was all about. So. Cheers guys and thanks for watching, Dr. Hans out.